Yo Gamer Name here, welcome to my Lars overview video. So basically I'm going to explain the archetype of what Lars is, what tools you need to utilize as a Lars player or if you're looking to pick up Lars, like what's Lars strong suit, strength and weaknesses and all that jazz. Okay, so Lars is a kind of character that commands the mid range, this kind of range right here, it all belongs to Lars. He is another character that has one of the best punishment in the game and he is also a stance mix-up. So the thing about Lars is in a neutral game, he has very very risky lows, right? But once he gets into stance, he has way better lows, crazy crazy lows. And that's kind of the character, the type of character that Lars is. So punishment, insane range, um, strong stance mix-ups, right? Kind of and a mix-up character as well in stance. So that's kind of the character that Lars is. So first let's start with his punishment. So Lars has classic 10 frame punishment. You need to take an 8, 2, 1, right? Very strong, leaves him at plus 8, puts him into a new stance called limited entry, which has two moves from that. So this is a guaranteed mix-up between the mid and the low. So it's a very, very strong 10 frame punish punisher. You can commit, you can decide not to commit to the mix-up if you want. So it's very, very strong. He has two forward, two four for four frame, right? Great punisher as well. Then he has arc blast for 15. Uh, of course, general 15 frame punisher. He has blue bolt, actually, which I skipped. Blue bolt, forward back two one for 14 frame. So as you can see, great 10 frame great 12 frame great 14 frame and great 15 frame the 14 frame launcher is one of the most important tools to have in this game because there are insane amount of moves in this game that are all minus 14 so having a 14 frame launcher is godlike so punishment wise standing punishers lars is one of the best in the game ever since the introduction back in tekken 6 and he's simply been buffed with the new arrival of 2 1. so now let's talk about his one standing punishment so for 10 11, sorry, he has off hand in 4, you know, uh, 16 damage, has good range, very decent, plus 5, right, can follow up with stuff like down, down back to 1, you know, very, very strong. Then he goes to 13 frames, which is off standing 2, 1. Actually, off standing 2, 3 is a new version that you're actually going to be using more than off standing 2, 1. You can even transition to his new stance called LE. I'll talk about the stance later on in the video, guys, don't worry. Then for 15, he has all standing one as well. So he does not have a uh, 14 frame all standing move. That would be too strong. It would be too perfect in terms of punishment. So punishment wise, guys, Lars is a character for you. If you, do, if you just want to pun if you just want to punish consistently with a character, Lars is one of those characters. Um, and with punishment as well, Lars is no slouch. He is no slouch, right? He has back, uh, back three, four which is also a 17 frame punisher can be used to punish like long range moves like the jack for one plus two bazooka move right uh poor death fists you know moves like that so very very great long range punisher so with punishment mainly will be this at this range right arc blast as well is good as a with punisher and forward back to one so again punishment lars is no slouch now, when I spoke about him being a command of the mid-range, so I'll kind of integrate his stance as well into this section of the video. So, Lars has two stances, uh, three now in Tekken 8. First of all, he has dynamic entry, which you do by doing forward three, right? Then he has silent entry, which you go into by holding forward or pressing forward after dynamic entry. So, forward three, dynamic entry, hold forward, silent entry. So DE has a bunch of moves, right? He has highs, he has a mid, counter hit, safe on block. He has a new low, 3 plus 4, minus 14 on block. He has another new low, uh, then the dynamic entry 4, which is plus 1 on hit, uh, not launch punisher, but I think it's minus 12 on block, so really, really strong. Uh, so when it comes to DE, it's one of his best stances, right? He also has a very strong new mid homing move, so DE3. So DE is amazing to just like get in manually, right? Especially after like a knockdown, you can do things like this. So you knock them down, boom, DE, right? You knock them down, DE2, you knock them down, DE low, you knock them down, DE low. So things like this. This is what makes DE a very strong stance. Now, I spoke about the mid-range earlier and 
as you can see he covers a lot of space when he goes into de right like this which makes his range really insane it's difficult to challenge Lars at this range even at this range because you can cancel de to se right and go to stuff like this right from all the way from here like look at this shit right it's so strong so mid-range Lars is a crazy ass character so then he has ce now unlike de ce is more of the mix-up stance right because in de you don't really have that strong mix-up because it doesn't really have a strong mid except from like the three i showed you of course the three is a hit engager right homing plus three and the thing about this move it goes into se right so let me talk about se the thing that makes se or silent entry a very strong mix-up stance is the fact that he has a mid right which launches and the low so that's kind of why this stance is so good because he has that 50 50 mix-up right so you can do crazy stuff like this um boom the silent entry right low boom or mid that's basically the premise of silent entry stance I mean, there's a bunch of different moves in silent entry like one which is a hit engager has a far crash high you know which knocks down on normal hit and he has three plus four which is zero on block so really really safe so those are two of Lars is two stances and now the thing that makes Lars a bit more difficult in Tekken 8 is the fact that you can transition from like you can you can interconnect all these stances so for example dynamic entry forward three into silent entry by holding forward can go into his new stance which is called limited entry by holding down in silent entry so dynamic entry silent entry hold down inside his entry to go to limited entry as you can see so this is what makes Lars a kind of complicated character but as soon as you just pick him up and mess around with the stance positions you will be satisfied because it's insane this character just flows like smooth as butter it's it's kind of nice not gonna lie so um limited entry has two moves like i told you about earlier he has a mid safe and the low which is only minus 12 so this makes him a very very scary character whilst in limited entry as well so what makes limited entry scary is his hit mechanic so when Lars is in hit his limited entry gets buffed right so the mid becomes a launcher safe launcher by the way and his law becomes a hell sweep with a knockdown right so that's what makes limited entry scary for Lars so as you can see all Lars's three stances serve different purposes right the dynamic entry is kind of his pressure stance right because there's a strong homing mid right and kind of used to cover space a lot right his se is his mix-up stance because he has a launching mid in that stance and his le is like his mother of you know the old, the mother of dragons of mix-ups right especially whilst in hit because you get the pure 50 50 right and the last thing that you must really show sure, what makes Lars insane in this game is his hit shoulder right so Lars got a new shoulder in hit which is called rebellion so this move forward three plus four is plus on block at plus five and forces him into silent entry right so remember what i said guys silent entry is his mix-up stance he has a mid and a low a launching mid and a low so it gives you that instant access to silent entry right Lars doesn't have a way to instantly go into silent entry from neutral so this power crash move in hit gives him that access right instant mix-up it's also a power crash and it has insane range whilst in hit so that's basically how Lars's hit mechanic works you mess around with his uh limited entry mix-ups and the rebellion shoulder of course rebellion takes up a lot of his hit gauge as you can see you only get three of these if you go into hit using a hit engager so that's basically how Lars works in Tekken 8 range punishment and heavy mix-up small instances and like i said he has very very good laws right not very sorry not very seeable not very reactable but they are all launch punishable whilst in neutral right so that makes Lars kind of bad in terms of laws his tracking as well is not that great right you can easily be stepped so you must be very careful but to atone for that he's been given more safer laws whilst in stance so with Lars 
you have to utilize him a lot for his stats, especially his lows. That's what makes him good. So basically, that's Lars' overview in Tekken 8. Now, this is just a simple discussion just to build you up and give you guys an idea of how this character works in this game. I'm going to follow up this video with a beginner guide for Lars on the most important tools you must utilize and just how to get into the character. Then I'll follow up that guide with an intermediate guide. I'll do everything for Lars. This is my main, this is my boy. I got you guys, so don't you worry. So if you're new, please consider subscribing. If you're a Lars main, you don't want to miss this content. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Please don't forget to Doria that like button. Like I said, subscribe if you're new. Um, let me know what you want to know in the comment section below. And, you know, I'll be there, guys. I'll be there. So, GG, guys. And may the frame data be ever in your favor.